Welcome to Basic Retouching Techniques. I'm Lee Veras, your host for this step-by-step -step tutorial. We're going to learn some of the basic techniques of retouching as it is applied to a portrait. We'll start with some basic color adjustments in Adobe Camera Raw and look at the use of the spot healing tool, the clone stamp tool, the healing brush, We'll spend a bit of time examining dodge and burn techniques, and lastly we will do a final color adjustment and set the black and white points for printing. So let's get started. So here we are in Photoshop, and uh, I'm going to be using a, a, a photo of myself here. Actually, this was taken by Bobby Lane. So we're starting off here in Camera Raw, and uh, the first thing we need to do is is adjust for the uh, the color temperature and unfortunately I don't have a gray card shot but fortunately as it turns out my gray beard works really well as a, a, a white balance reference so I'm going to get the white balance tool here and we'll just click right on the gray beard and it should neutralize the color uh, and we can see that uh, it changes quite a bit. Um, now I'm going to do a little bit of adjusting here. Um, just going to bring the highlights down just a little bit. So we'll make the, the highlight side of my face a little bit darker and maybe the shadow side just a little bit lighter. Just a little bit. Uh, otherwise, it looks pretty good. And uh, you know, expertly photographed here. So uh, we're going to open this up now and uh, and do some work in Photoshop. So here we go. All right. So some basic uh, basic approach here to retouching. Uh, I don't want to do a glamour thing. Uh, I, I, I just want to kind of make myself look as good as I, I can look, <laughs> given the circumstances. Uh, so um, whenever we begin retouching, we normally are going to be making an empty layer to hold our retouching. So the first thing I'm going to do is just work on getting rid of little, uh, little defects, little spots. So for that, we will use the spot healing tool. But first, I'm going to create a new layer. And we'll, we'll select the spot healing tool here. It's like the little band-aid with kind of a little uh, dotted line around it here. Uh, and we look at the, the options for the tool. And we want to make sure that we're sampling all the layers. Because we're working in an empty layer. And we're going to name this spotting. And if we don't sample all the layers, we'll be sampling from the empty layer. And there will be nothing to fix in the empty layer. So we also have a couple of options here. Normally, the default is for content aware. And uh, so I'm going to kind of zoom in here and just start working on uh, little little spots. And it, ooh, it gets pretty frightening up this close. But uh, uh, so I've got I've got some kind of blemishes here. So I'm going to the basic strategy here is to just sort of make the spot healing tool big enough to cover up uh, a little blemish that you want to get rid of, and then you just sort of paint across it, and voila, it sort of eliminates the little uh, defect. Now, in a bigger area, uh, you might use a bigger brush. Um, this area is going to, I'll come to, I'll return to that because that's going to illustrate a, a problem with the tool. Uh, but I can go around here, and uh, it's, it's particularly good at eliminating uh, like stray hairs. Uh, I can just kind of paint it out. Here's one that's like extra long and I'm going to just trace over it with a spot healing tool here and it sort of magically goes away. Um, so I could get in there and just, you know, individually clone out all these little, you know, just spot them out, all these little whiskers, but I'm not going to do that. I, I mean, it's not that critical, but here's a here's a whisker of the hair that I might want to trim back a little bit. 
Okay, so this tool is particularly good at like little tiny de details that you want to eliminate. Um, I'm going to use a different technique for the, the veins on the nose, uh, but here's, here's a little area. Now, nine times out of ten, if you do this, it'll work out great. So I'm just going to paint across this and we'll see what happens. Okay, so it did a good job up here, but it's smeared across down here. So uh, I'm going to try redoing that area. Uh, the, my rule of thumb is that you do it three times, and if it, if it doesn't work, uh, do something else. So we're, we will return to that to, fix, to com finish fixing that up. Uh, let's get rid of this hair here. And uh, you know, maybe this one across here we can yeah, get rid of pretty effectively. Okay, so there, there are various other little things that I can do here, but basically um, the spot healing brush is really good for these small little defects. Okay, um, I might knock that one back. Okay, occasionally uh, you'll you'll get a retouch that's too smooth. Uh, and I'm looking for one here. I'm not going to, I'm probably not going to find one to illustrate this, but let's try, uh, let's try this. So I'm going to kind of paint over that. And occasionally you'll get something a little, a little too smooth. If it's, if that's happening with you, try the create texture. Um, and that usually, uh, if you're having the smoothness issue, the texture issue, you know, the texture option will will work better for you. Uh, it it also it does the content aware fill kind of aspect of this a little bit differently. So in some cases, uh, it can work out better depending on on the issue that you're having. Um, okay, so now I'm I'm going to try I'll go back to my content aware here, and I'm going to going to try to take care of this little uh, kind of mole here. So. I want to cover it up, right? That's the basic strategy. And uh, it does something interesting here where it pulls in from the shadow, you know. Uh, so no matter what I do here, it's kind of pulling in a little bit too much of the shadow. Uh, so the, when, you, when you have this sort of situation, you're close to a dark edge, uh, it's better to use the clone stamp tool. Now the clone stamp tool works. It gives you a, a precise control over what gets replaced from where. Okay, so we're going to sample an area next to the place where we want to retouch. And in fact, I can I can actually retouch right into the edge of this, uh, you know, the edge of the cheek here, right next to the nose. I'm going to sample from this point, and I want to start covering up let me make this a little bit bigger so you can see you get this little preview of what you're gonna what the retouch is gonna look like so I can use that to line up uh, the cheek edge here and that way I can kind of bring the bring that edge in to cover up the, the defect that I that I've created here with my other retouch so okay so I I'm actually replacing um, that area with another area of skin and the the trick here is to is to move around it's a bit harder to use this tool than the spot healing tool but you sample different places to get Kind of a, a a different texture in there. It takes a little little bit more finessing, and you have to kind of find the right tonality to replace the area. Um, so it is it is definitely a little bit a little bit more difficult to to get a good retouch here, but because you can control exactly what you're replacing uh, that area with, um, you can get a nicer, smoother uh, 
retouch that doesn't pull in the dark shadow into the retouched area. Okay, so now that I've done that, um, so that's that's spotting. Okay, so my next challenge is, you know, maybe what am I going to do uh, with the bags under the eyes? Uh, and this can be kind of tricky. Um, and I'll, I'll show you one approach, which is, is not my preferred method in this particular instance, but I'll just show you how that works. So this is going to be our healing layer. Okay, and you'll see why it's important to have uh, separate layers for the retouching. So this time I'm going to use the healing brush tool. Now the healing brush tool, I mean, the way it's intended to be used is we're going to make it really big. And it's sort of like the clone stamp tool in that we get to pick an area um, that we get to pick an area that we're going to use to replace another area. So I've sampled from over here and I'm going to place this underneath the, uh, oops, and I have to change. See, it says current layer. If I'm sampling an empty layer, I get nothing. So I want to have current and below. Uh, Otherwise, the defaults are, are always pretty good here. So we're, we're sampling from this area, and I'm going to re replace the, the bags with the sampled area that's down here. Okay, so I'm just going to brush over this, and it, it looks a little ridiculous. But then magically, when I let go, it sort of blends it in. Now... Uh, the problem with this approach is that it's it, you can't really completely cover up the bags. It looks a little ridiculous. So uh, having it in an empty layer allows us to kind of reduce the opacity, bring back some of the wrinkles, something that, that looks believable, right? So I'm using here, I'm at 38% opacity, and I've, you know, I've sort of knocked back that that uh, wrinkled area with another bit of skin texture. Now, it still doesn't quite look right to me, uh, and I I I will probably use a different approach here. Uh, but another thing that you can do, and you can see now what you know, it's transparently sort of knocking back the the intensity of the wrinkle. But I've got an area where I don't quite like the way it blends. So I can actually put a layer mask there and use a, a soft edge brush. And I usually use a, a, a low opacity, you know, maybe 10 or 20%, and just kind of brush into the edge to kind of bring, you know, fade that, that retouch a little more convincingly along that edge. Okay. So not too bad. It's going to be a little bit trickier over here because I don't have a good textured area nearby to replace this this with. This this texture is just not going to work. Um, so I'm going to use a different approach to eliminating, uh, or not eliminating, but reducing the intensity of that bag. So we're going to make another layer, and this layer is going to be a dodging and burning layer. Now, the key to using this is to change your apply mode from normal to either overlay or soft light. Now, I usually use soft light because one of the problems with overlay is that as you, if you very intensely dodge an area, you can increase the saturation of it. Uh, and soft light doesn't suffer from that as much. So the, uh, the notion here is that we're going to uh, anything that we want to darken, we will paint into this layer with black and anything that we want to lighten we will paint in with white. Uh, and we're going to use this at very low intensity. So 10% uh, or I usually do uh, 5%. So I, I you know, change the opacity up there. OK, so let's just take a look at this. So I've got an area here that I want to reduce the intensity of that. So I'm going to start into the deeper part of this crevice. And I'm just painting uh, into this area uh, into this layer with 5% uh, opacity of white. Okay, so I'm just 
very slowly and I kind of I'll work the you know the the details little crevices and try to lighten those up um, and I'll also kind of sort of macro lighten the whole thing just a little bit and it probably looks like I'm not doing very much let's turn this on and off and you can see what what's happening right so you can see how uh, I can I can very effectively lighten that area and sort of thus knock back the wrinkle without actually disrupting the actual texture that's there. And you can get pretty detailed with this, you know, just kind of get right in there. It's always a good idea to work very slowly and not try to hammer this with a, with a uh, higher opacity. And it's just amazing what you can do with this simple technique. So we can get in there and 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 really just sort of knock this back. I'm gonna uh, do a little uh, quick edit here, so you don't have to watch me uh, go over and over this area. But I I like to work very slowly. Okay, now we're we're pretty far along, and I'm gonna toggle this on and off so you can see uh, what what it looks like, and you can see how I've sort of knocked back the intensity. I haven't eliminated it, but knocked it back so it's it's less noticeable. Uh, now we can also knock back some of the the highlights. Unfortunately, if I do this, uh, since these are kind of white glistening highlights, if I use the uh, the black paint and just try to darken this down um, I'll create kind of an ashy color there and it'll, it'll just sort of be darker but gray so um, there's a different strategy here to eliminate you know eliminate the highlights from this uh, I'm gonna actually make a curves adjustment and uh, we're going to I mean right now I'm gonna just darken the thing uh, I'll just take the white point down and darken this down, but I, I want these highlights not to just get gray, but I want them to be warm, you know, of skin color, right? So I'm going to take the blue down, and that will make it kind of more yellow, and then I'm going to take the green down, and that's, that'll bring it more into a kind of a pink, uh, pink range. Let's take out a little more blue. Okay, now obviously I'm, I've, I'm sort of darkening the whole thing here, uh, and I only want to darken those little highlights, which I'm going to paint in. So I'm going to invert uh, the layer mask here. So Command or Control I will turn that to black. Okay, now I can again paint with white into the layer mask, and it's the same sort of thing. I use very low opacity and just sort of gradually uh, build this up. And I, I, I'm just going to get in there and really kind of knock back those highlights. And once you start to have this effect in place, you may want to make an adjustment to the color. So uh, I'm going to work on this for a little bit and then come back and, and readjust the color to make it blend in more. Because I can see right away that I'm going to need to do that. It's still looking a little gray, so it needs a little more color into it. Okay, so I've got I've got these highlights knocked down, but they're they're the wrong color. They're they're still a little gray. Maybe have a touch of green in it. Uh, so I'm going to adjust my curve. So uh, basically, what I want to do, let's see. I, I I think it may be easier for me to just add back uh, some red. So I'm going to kind of increase the red here just a little bit. And maybe take out a little more, more green. There, there we go. We're starting to get there. Take out a little more blue. Okay. 
All right. Okay, so that's that's starting to look kind of a little more convincing. Now that I've I've darkened it even more, right, to, to make the color correct, I might have to back off on on that just a bit so it's not so intense. Okay. So those are uh, some basic techniques and uh, again here this is I would probably prefer to use the dodging and burning here to take out these uh, or knock back, I should say, uh, the veins here. So we'll we'll try that just a bit, kind of take them back just a bit. Okay, so let's uh, now uh, take a look at our work. Toggle this on and off, and you can see uh, maybe a little too aggressive in this area, uh, but I can knock that back with an eraser. Just a little bit, again, very low opacity, so I'm going to go back to 5% uh, here and just give it just a, a little bit of a hit to bring that back. And so you can see toggling it on and off really helps to preview to see how uh, how you've done you know so we can now come back now look at it far out and we can see uh, that we've uh, we've actually done quite a bit of work here okay so again the goal here not to uh, completely eliminate the texture or uh, or or change the uh, the actual wrinkles which I prefer to think of as character lines uh, we're not trying to eliminate those entirely. Uh, we're just trying to knock it back just a little bit so it doesn't look, you know, so intense. Okay, now, uh, this area up here, I've got a little problem with lint up here. And uh, I, I'd like to kind of fill all that in. And uh, I'm going to use a, a, I mean, I could get in there, obviously, with a spot healing brush and just get in there and... Uh, go spot by spot, you know, just kind of knock it back. But that that's just going to take forever, and I'm too lazy for that. So uh, I'm going to try a little trick here. Um, selecting the top layer here, and I'm going to merge all these layers into one layer at the top, a merge visible. But I want to keep my layer structure underneath that. So I'm going to hold down the Option or Alt key and select Merge Visible. And that places a copy of all of these, the result of all these layers up at the top. So this one is exactly identical. Uh, and now what I'm going to do is run a blur filter. I'm going to run blur and surface blur. Okay, it's blur, surface blur. And we'll get the, uh, get the dialog box over here. It's off screen. Okay, so I want to pick a threshold that uh, doesn't blur across the edge as much if I if I can manage it, but it is it's enough of a threshold that all those little lint marks, uh, all the little finey fine lint things get taken out. Okay, so uh, also do we need that much blur? We really just need enough to eliminate uh, the lint. Okay, so something like this. I'm just blurring enough to eliminate all the lighter lint. Okay, and so we say okay. Now, the trick here is not to just apply this like this, but we can try doing darken. So the texture comes, you know, at least the darker texture comes back. And now uh, I'll hide this whole layer with a black layer mask. So that's holding down Option or Alt. And now I can just sort of erase all the little white specks uh, with, with a brush. So we'll get a nice brush here. We'll go to full opacity. And I'm brushing with white into the layer mask. And um, I could do the whole thing, or I could just sort of 
dust it in and it may be a low opacity uh, just to knock back the more egregious uh, kind of lint. So the blurred image is, is being applied in darkened mode. It makes it less obvious that you've, you've done a blur. Okay, so you get the idea. Okay, maybe uh, maybe I work a little bit more detail. There's a couple of little white spots up here that are bugging me. So we'll kind of knock those back a little bit. Okay. Uh, and now what I'd like to do is add a sort of vignetting effect here to kind of finish this up. Um, so the way I do that is I make an empty layer at the top and uh, we can leave it in normal or sometimes I'll change it to multiply. Uh, but since I'm going to be painting in with black paint, I, I can leave it at normal. And I'm going to use a gradient tool uh, at low opacity uh, to build up uh, a sort of vignette effect. So we're going to vignette up from the bottom. So I click and drag. And uh, the, the trick here is to use this second gradient style, which is foreground, uh, foreground to transparent. OK. And we're using a low opacity in the gradient so that we can repeatedly add the gradient. And the trick is to kind of drag from the edge change your angle a little bit every time. And it's sort of like edge burning in the enlarger. You can get a lot of control over how, and it's sort of more interactive this way. You can sort of see uh, the vignette develop here. I get a little, it takes a little practice to get good at this, but uh, there you go. Now I have uh, a kind of nice dramatic looking portrait. Okay, the last thing that we need to do, because we're not done yet. The last thing we need to do is determine our black points and white points for printing purposes. So uh, you can't you can't know just by looking at something what uh, you know what the the actual you know darkest thing in the image is. Oftentimes, there's a lot of dark areas in this image, and we have to locate the darkest thing in the image. And then I want the the value of that dark area. See, I, I'm moving the cursor around and looking at at my numbers. I know that I have a dark areas that uh, are not particularly neutral and I really want these dark areas to be neutral the, the blackest blacks and uh, they're too dark in a lot of places 1177 has a red bias and it's too dark uh, for printing purposes I found for most ink on paper scenarios including inkjets um, you shouldn't set your black point to anything lower than 15 so uh, 15, 15, 15 is, is my goal here. But I need to locate the absolute darkest point. Um, in an inkjet printer or any kind of uh, ink on paper, uh, mostly any tone that's darker than 15 will print the same shade of black. So you hit black in your print at about 15, a level of 15. And uh, so we don't want to make our black point zero because then we've lost the ability to resolve detail from zero to 15. So when we have a tone in there that should be just one step above black to give it a chance to reproduce, we want to set our black point to 15. OK, so first I'm going to identify a black and white point. So I'm going to use a threshold adjustment here. So I click on new threshold adjustment. And uh, we can move the slider in the threshold. It tells me where the breakpoint between black and white is going to be. I can move it to the left. And the last thing to wink out will be the darkest thing in the image. 
which looks like this this area right in here is the darkest thing. So I'm going to get uh, my color sample tool. Here, this is my fixed color sampler. So I select that, and I'm going to click into the image where that dark shadow is. And now I'm going to move to the highlight side. And this image doesn't really have a great highlight. Um, it looks like it's it's the little catch light in the eye. So we're not really going to bother to, to set a sampler there. I, I can just read that point later on. So right now I'm going to just throw this adjustment away. So we've placed a point there for our darkest black, and it's at 0, 0, 0 right now. Okay. Um, if you encounter a situation like this, it's good to find another point that's that's not quite as black. So I'm going to set a, a secondary black point right here. And the reason I do that is it seems to me that there's a red bias in the shadow here. So I'm going to try to eliminate that. Uh, but I'm going to start by bringing this up to 15. Uh, and we'll see what happens here. Um, so let's actually first check what that highlight value is. It's specular highlight, and chances are it's going to be pretty close to 255. Uh, it's almost there, um, and it's not worth changing. It's it's high enough that it's it's just not worth changing. Because if I change it, it's going to affect the highlights in the face and the beard and all that kind of stuff. So, but I do want to uh, change my black point. So I'm going to put a curve on here. And just looking at these numbers, I want the darkest thing to be 15, 15, 15. And it, it, it looks like it just makes the whole image a lot lighter. Um, and this is one of the things, when you make a, an inkjet print, everyone complains that the prints always come out darker. That's because you're setting your black point too low. And it, it does suppress the look of the whole thing. OK, so now coming over here, this area uh, is now 24, 21, 21 not not probably not enough of a color cast for it to matter uh, I can I can come over here and just maybe dip the red down just a little bit so uh, I'll get the little finger tool here and yeah it's really low on the curve so I'm gonna you know I'll just place a point right there and maybe dip it down just a little bit so I'll use the arrow key and look over here and you know, maybe that much would, would be good. Now, the other thing that I'm going to check is the color of the skin. Uh, in Camera Raw, we had just did a gray balance, uh, a white balance, and uh, that's about all we can really do because I don't have adequate uh, numbers. I can't really see CMYK numbers. Uh, and I like to judge the color of the skin looking at the CMYK values up here. So I'm not going to place a sample point, but I'm just going to move around. And what I'm looking for is for the magenta and yellow to be closer together. And then the yellow should be a bit higher than magenta. And both of those should be further away from uh, cyan than they are uh, you know, to each other. So we're looking like we have pretty good values most places. Uh, you know, Maybe a tad red. Uh, so, if that's the case, uh, instead of taking, you know, red out, I'm actually going to uh, take some blue out. And the reason for that is that in order to change the ratio of, of magenta to yellow, if I want yellow number to be higher, I'm going to remove some blue. So I'm, I'm just going to find a point that's sort of an average skin value right here in the blue channel and by dipping that blue down, I'm going to get, look at the numbers over there at the CMYK numbers at, at the upper right. I'm making the yellow value go up a little bit. So I'm sort of warming up, warming up the skin. Now I'll, I'll just double check on my neutral here. Uh, and I am getting, I am getting a little blue into my I'm, I'm actually warming up. I'm taking a little blue out. So, um, and it seems like the green value is a little high in my beard now for some reason. So I'm going to go over there and want to eliminate 
uh, the green at that point and lock the green down on the skin and perhaps let's see we're a little cool in the in that but I don't know what color that is I know my my beard is neutral so I, I do want to kind of eliminate a little bit of green there to neutralize that so I'll dip that down until looking at the numbers 137 139 136 I think if we get it in there we're pretty good and uh, so we've got a little redder shadow going on in here uh, so I'm going to pull that up so I'm really trying to just dip the green down in the area where the beard lives which is just in this little area right here okay so our shadow green point, I want to bring that up so that uh, so that the yellow and the uh, magenta are closer together in the shadow. So my my sort of lit side, I've got um, got a little too much magenta, so I'm going to let this come down a little bit. Nope, that's doing the opposite. Bring that up. Okay, so this ended up being a little bit more complicated uh, color correction. Uh, but you can see what happens. The shadow doesn't look so severe when we when we change the black point. Okay, so our black point, again, the darkest thing, 15, 15, 15. Uh, we're trying to keep things a bit neutral in the shadows. Uh, obviously, as they get you know lighter on the, on the face, we're not going to be neutral anymore. It's going to be more on the red side, but... Uh, in the darker areas, we don't want the darker areas to look too saturated. And sometimes we have to do all kinds of different tricks to make that uh, work this way. I think I still have a little more red in the skin than I'd like. Uh, the lit areas are pretty good. Um, so I have the increased contrast has given me a, a little more now it's revealed some sort of red patches in the skin so I'm going to show you another little technique here for equalizing the, the, the color of the skin because we've got nice color here and here but it's a little too red in, in other areas so that suggests the use of a hue saturation adjustment which I'm going to do over here and we're going to adjust for reds so I, I take the master and select red so now we're targeting a specific uh, color and I'm gonna go in here and try and find uh, a particularly see here's a really an area right here on the side of the nose that I'm looking at the CMYK numbers and I've got magenta 47 yellow 38 I'd really like it to be reversed I'd like to have more yellow than magenta here so I'm gonna click on that okay and it this region sort of centered over that targeted color and now I'm going to get the minus eyedropper here and subtract uh, a, a nicer color skin so over here the, the, the color of the skin is reading uh, more more correct the yellow is higher than the magenta so I'm going to click on that you can see how this region got a bit smaller and we can kind of trim in again also on this side to eliminate some of the more yellow skin and just target the more red skin and then to make sure that I'm visualizing this correctly, I'm going to do a ridiculous hue shift here. So I'm going to crank the slider all the way over uh, to the left. And now we see the targeted areas are cyan. Those are being uh, fully uh, shifted. The other areas are sort of ramping off into other colors. And if I can pull in this little side here, I can get it so that it comes off the, the better color skin completely. Okay, so now it's peeled off the correct colored skin, and there's a gradual transition to the uh, more intensely red skin. So what we do is we come back to the center, and then I start nudging this over to the right, and all the while looking at the skin color, and I can see that now my red patches are more or less eliminated turn the eye on and off you can see what, what's happening there's I got a little red a little bit of red in the nose and in other places and now that that eliminates it the only thing I want to do is bring back the color of the lips a little bit 
So I have a layer mask there. I can paint with black into that layer mask to hide the adjustment here, which is equalize the skin, the skin color. And I don't necessarily want to bring back all the red in the list just a little bit, just to make it look uh, realistic. And sometimes it's if sometimes this can be overdone and it just looks a little too monochromatic. So I might back it off and allow for just a little bit of natural color variation to show up, you know, something like that. Okay. So there we are. And uh, let's, let's see what we looked like uh, in the beginning here. Look at my whole layers here. I'm going to go down to the bottom layer and we'll uh, solo that by sort of option clicking. I hold down option or alt and click on the little eyeball here. Okay, so that's what it looked like before. That's what it looks like after. And it, it looks a bit hazier, right? Because we've uh, raised the black point. But if your intention is to print, you have to do that. Uh, if you're not going to print, uh, we can just turn off that, that curve adjustment. And that's what we look like right now. Okay, thank you for watching. I hope you enjoyed this look at some of the basic techniques for portrait retouching. You can find much more advanced information on my website and my blog. I have a YouTube channel with lots of video tutorials, and you can follow me on Twitter to find out about my various classes and workshops all over the country. I have two books in print, available on Amazon in Kindle as well as paper versions, Mastering Exposure and the Zone System for Digital Photographers, and my bestseller, Skin, The Complete Guide to Digitally Lighting, Photographing, and Retouching Faces and Bodies. I also have a comprehensive course on photo illustration, masking, and image compositing. Uh, and that's online at udemy.com. Nine hours of step-by-step -step video tutorials with all the work files for download. And uh, you can purchase at a special discount if you use the code YouTube50, just like this. It's coupon code when you purchase the course. I have an online course at the Picture Perfect School of Photography called Photoshop Layers Fundamentals, now open for enrollment. This is a four-week course with assignments and critiques where I teach about Photoshop selections, masks, adjustments, and layers. I also have a DVD at Photoshop Cafe with five hours of instruction about photo illustration techniques. And right now it's discounted, but I don't know for how long, so grab your copy today. And finally, be sure and like my Veris Photo Media page on Facebook. If you sign up for my email list, I'll send you a free PDF tutorial on the Zone system. Thanks for watching.